When you think about the best genre of video games, a lot of different answers might pop into your mind. Some would say first-person shooter, other believe it to be advanced puzzle games, and the list goes on. Well, I'm here to tell you today that you are all wrong. It's games where you play as a dog. I have a problem. <laughs> Ever since I can remember, I've always had a fondness for games that you play as a dog, you know, doing dog things, and this is so fucking specific! <laughs> and at some point I've started wondering if there are games out there that lets you play as a dog, which I didn't know about. So naturally, I turned to Google, and Google said, get fucked! <laughs> there are no more than a couple of lists on the entire interweb and they're all bad. <laughs> like some of the games that I have always known about which is straight up not on the list and some of the games that were on the list which is like straight up bullshit. I mean yeah I guess you play as a dog sometimes but if you walk around as a human for most of the game anyway then what's the point? And, okay, yeah, he might be a dog, but that's just not what I fucking mean. I'm sorry, did you just put Nintendog on your list? Like, don't get me wrong, I love Nintendogs, but that's not a game where you play as a dog. That is a game where you adopt and own a dog. I mean, this is... These lists are out of proportions, and clearly I need to make my own list. But, as for any good list, we need a couple of rules. Rule number one. No games where you basically swap the dog out for a human. This means that there are no games with anthropomorphic dogs in it. If it walks around on two legs and acts like a human, or God forbid it, even wielding around a weapon, then it's not. it doesn't count. It's not on the list. I'm sorry, this doesn't count. Rule number two. You need to play as a dog for the entire game, or at least for most of the game. Like, it can't just be a game where you are a dog for like a small segment or a minigame. Rule number three, no freeware games or anything of the like. I mean, if I had to check every single website out there with all Flash games, we would be here until the end of times. Rule number four, no side-scrolling games. Admittedly, this one may sound a bit strange, but I just kind of feel like some of the feel of being a dog is lost is side-scrollers. Also, this rule mostly exists because that I avoid talking about Paw Patrol, the game. So um, this is for my own sanity and uh, can you blame me? Honestly, can you blame me? It's time to look at some dog games. We're starting out with a dog slide. Dog's Life is definitely a, a game. This is our main character, Jake. He's a cool dude. I fucking hate my life. Dog's Life came out in 2003, but I am honestly surprised that it's not a full-on 19th game. I mean, there's just some... It's just Jake's entire vibe in this game. I mean, the game is this close to having Jake go on a skateboard and say radical. I mean, it, it's critical. And of course, as I do in my little research, I took a trip to our dear Wikipedia page. And you just know that just like with movies, it's always a good sign when the director is also the designer and the writer of this game. I hope you got to make the game that you wanted, David Braben. Well, one day cool guy Jake watches his cross get kidnapped by a discount Jasper and Horace over here, and now he has to find and save her. But of course, that entire mission is sidetracked for just a second because this kid comes out of nowhere and wants to race us to the top of the hill. So I take control of Jake, and the first thing I see is... <laughs> in smell o vision <laughs> <laughs> To be honest, this is probably the most unique mechanic of this game. Simply being able to sniff around is not anything special. You'll see that when we get to the other games. 
but this is the only one we are not only able to see the smells, but there are also multiple smells which trigger different things. Okay, this game's clunky as fuck. I mean, Jake moves super slow, and this is when he actually runs. So we follow this kid around in what can only be described as the speed of a dead snail. Hey Jake, what's up with you? You okay? You look a little funny. The dog nappers mentioned a place name. What was it again? I've got to go see Gramps. Mom says he's as crazy as a nudist at the South Pole, but I think he's cool. What? The kid can't actually understand Jake. Jake just kind of talks. Jake actually talks a lot in this game. Hit me again, my friend. Bones, who could live without him? Oh, brother, who cut the cheese? Endlessly. All the time. Oh, what an He also farts, and at some point he learns to poop on command, and there's a lot of fart jokes in this game, actually. Use triangle to enter smell of vision. It's it's still fucking funny. The different color kind of smells leads to two different options: bones or competition with another dog. These competitions can be stuff like racing, digging, or God help me, yes, this is real, a peeing game. So when you win against another dog, you usually get a bone. And then you, and I and I shit you not, this is real, you get to possess the other dog's body and mind control it. Jake's not even subtle about it. This is exactly what happens. Lopez is lucky. The ground is a lot more interesting up close. <laughs> Wait a sec. I could take Lopez through that doggy door. So with the actual power of mind control by his side, Jake uses the other dogs to get into places or solve problems that he normally wouldn't be able to do on his own. And if that wasn't enough, Jake also breaks the fourth wall. I lost? Are you playing with oven gloves on? So yeah, in this game we're playing as an all-knowing, godlike creature, which has taken the form of a smelly beagle. But back to the gameplay. Despite being an actual divine being, Jake gets hurt literally all the time. And when he gets hurt, he gets an even slower walking animation, which doesn't go away by itself. No, we have to find something for Jake to eat for him to walk normally again. All of which is enough for me to contemplate jumping out of my fourth floor window. It also just happens completely at random. Sometimes he falls from a cliff and it but is completely fine, and sometimes he stumbles over a fucking pebble and gets hurt. Oh man, what a bummer! My amplifier batteries are dead! Like, what am I supposed to do? Hey dog dude, bring me a battery and I like toss you a bone, you dig? So now we're apparently running errands for this stoner dude, and Jake is still fucking sad! <laughs> At this point it also becomes clear how awful it is to move around while using smell -o vision Running straight ahead is fine, but jumping is just a straight up nightmare, because you have absolutely no idea of what your depth perception is when you're using this mode. Hey Jake, I've been expecting you. Good evening Mr. Bond, I've been expecting you. Gramps is drooling in his sleep again. Can you bark him awake? Yeah, sure. Let's get Grandpa over your heart attack. Why not? Jake! Oh, Jake, that ain't fair. Jake, you bad, bad boy! Hey, that was your idea. So we find a town and th this woman seems to have some kind of problem. We also meet a double man with a higher bone count than Jake, so he's just kind of like, yeah, nope. So this is the game's excuse for having us collect bones and win minigames. Throughout the game, dogs will get a higher and higher bone count, which apparently counts as a sort of hierarchy. I mean, how could they know how many bones each other have had? 
Jake clearly eats the bones. He doesn't walk around with them stuffed down his dog pocket. So how the how would they know? Jake also for some reason just doesn't interact with any of the other dogs. He talks about them, but he he never talks to them. It's kind of like he can't talk dog or he the other dogs don't want to or he doesn't want to. And why do none of the other dogs talk? <laughs> what is going on? What is this game? But back to the Doberman, because he actually belongs to the dog catcher, who is a recurring enemy of the game, even though he actually could not give less of a fuck about trying to catch the dogs, or at least Jake. I mean... It's no good. He's too fast. I can't be bothered with this. get the fuck out of there and just find a neighborhood instead. rock a baby in the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. No wonder the kid's crying. That is one scary song. Oh, Brittany, if only I knew where you dropped your doll. Lady, why are you talking to a random dog? I mean, she's clearly looking at us. Why? Why? What a wimp. You don't see puppies crying. Jake the Beagle, calling babies wimps since 2003. We find the missing doll and now the woman expects us to throw it up to the baby. Which sounds easy in theory, but turned out to be one of the most infuriating segments of this entire game. Here's your award. And if you can solve the mystery of our missing dog, I'd be so grateful. Madam? I'm a dog. So we lock a terrier in a garage because the mailman was about to pee his fucking pants. And then we get the clue to where to look for Daisy. At this point, the game honestly gets a bit formulaic. You find smells, you compete with other dogs, you get bones, rinse and repeat. If you have enough bones, you can skip entire parts of the game, which I did, but then I almost forgot to show you the worst NPC of this entire game. I was out chopping wood, and now I can't find my axe. Oh, what am I gonna do? No, wait, this is the worst one. Oh no, my beautiful rocket. <laughs> so many bones later, we return to challenge the Doberman again, and of course we win because of the chat we are. Since the Doberman is now no longer a problem, we have access to go on a train onwards to finding Daisy. But not before we get a cutscene of these guys, whom we all want to see so very much. Uh, hot. <coughs> Would you care for a tissue, Wayne? Oh, mind your own beeswax, Dwayne! We also get to see the main villain of this game. Do you know what happens to idiots who disappoint me? <laughs> Yes, Miss Peaches. And I mean, come on, if this isn't the Corella de Villain Horace and Jasper situation, I don't know what it is. The next segment of the game takes place in a ski resort, and honestly, it's just the same as before. At some point, we have to help a little girl build a snowman, and it turns out to be the most tedious task ever because every time we bring her something, we get a little unskippable cutscene, and it just Goes on forever. <laughs> there are nine different things we need to bring this girl, and we have to sit through that cutscene every single time. Can you find some more coal, please? Can you find some more coal, please? Can you find some more coal, please? Oh my god, go and find your own fucking coal! We fuck around a bit longer before we have to climb a mountain to save a guy from dying. These boulders, oh my lord, these boulders. I cannot begin to count how many times these stupid pieces of shit Boulders turn me into a beagle pancake. I hate them so much. Fuck the dog catcher guy. These boulders are now my arch nemesis. 
Eventually we save the guy and then his brother gives us a hint on where to go next. So after battling with ice physics for 800 years, god I fucking hate ice levels so fucking much. We finally have enough bones to pass by the dog catcher's doberman yet again and get on the train. We then arrive to the most depressing city I've ever seen in my life. We then explore the town and the park for a bit and at this point in time I realize that I'm tired of doing the same tasks over and over again. It also doesn't help that I can't get this dog up on this platform and some boxes. I mean, how, f how difficult can it be to get on some boxes and stop driving too far? So at this point, I decide to say fuck it and instead of finding more bones to pass the Doberman for the third time, I instead decided to try and use a speedrunning strategy to just jump over him. So, you know, instead of actually playing this game, I decided to just try and do this very specific jump for the good part of a couple of hours. <laughs> Which probably wasn't faster, but at least it was something different. But I did it. I managed. I am officially a speedrunner. Don't, don't quote me on that. I'm not a, I'm not a speedrunner. I'm not no, I'm not nearly good enough at video games to be a speedrunner, Jesus Christ. But I got into the dog pound, so... Kill me. <laughs> hey, a stray mutt? Come here, you! So, we then get treated to another cutscene where we learned that this woman wants to grind up the dogs that the guys have caught for her, including Daisy, and use them as cat food. She will make a soft and sensitive treat, sliced, diced, and mashed into a delicious pate by the big machine. Yikes! <laughs> Back outside we see how the cages with the dogs are just kinda standing there on the ground. And the keys are just scattered around as well. I mean these guys these guys wasn't even trying. So we get the keys and then the dog catcher just kinda just he just ups and goes. He just quits. Ah to heck with this dog catching business. I'm gonna pursue my dream a programming computer games. And while all I want to do is follow his example, we are so close to being done with this game and the pain is nearly over. But of course, who else? The Doberman is in our way again, demanding that we have even more bones now. So I go, fuck no, and then I just do this. <laughs> I said, then I do this. Okay, speedrunning strats are hard, but at least I did get it right in the end. So we get inside and then we actually see how the woman wants to achieve her plan of making dogs into cat food and it's honestly horrifying. So now we have to run around, frantically switching off the machines to save Daisy or else this shit happens. Daisy? No, I can't look. The cat lady then emerges with a gun and I'm just not faced at anything at this point. Do you want to know how Diggs defeat her? Do you? Do you really want to know? Speaking of food, I had beans and cabbages for supper. Take this, cat lady. <laughs> Then, oh no, the game's 
not done yet. Canning. Miss Peaches. Cat food. I'll get you for this, you horrible hounds! I'll track you down! Oh. Well, this is not so bad. A little silly, perhaps. It reminds me of a cartoon I once saw and... I'll slice you! I'll dice you! I'll mash you! If it's the last thing you see me... Me! Slicing. Dicing. Mashing. Miss Peaches is cat food. Well, she's just dead then. Can this game pick a tone? You can't have your villain defeated by a fart and then literally slice her up and can her in the next set. You, you, you can't do that. <laughs> and then there's just that. That's the ending. That's dog's life. <laughs> next. Lassie is a game that was made for the 2005 movie of the same name. And while the movie was pretty well received, the game, on the other hand... Okay, so I was looking at information about the game and literally the only thing I could find was on the Wikipedia page for the movie. A video game was released in 2005 on the PlayStation 2 and was negatively received. <laughs> That's all there is to say about this game. <laughs> That's it. And then, and then, if you look at the source for this claim, it just fucking links to an Amazon page where you can buy the game. Oh look, a good five star rating from three whole people. That means it has to be perfect. You also just know you're in for a good time when it takes four tries for the game to actually start up. I mean, not gonna lie, this game made my PS2 sound like it was gonna blow up. It's dying. <laughs> it's actually dying. Oh my god. And all because of Lassie the game. <laughs> no. So we boot up our game, make a save file and... Hi gang, this is Blast. Hi. Blast is here to show you how to play Lassie. Okay. This tutorial then proceeds to tell us how to move. And I mean, this is Lassie the game. It's not exactly brain surgery. It's literally just move Lassie, move camera, jump, crouch, sniff, bark, talk to people. We then get some backstory and yada yada, missing puppies, on with the game. <laughs> Holy shit, the game is gearing up for some action now. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe we're actually in for something exciting. It doesn't take more than a few seconds, however, to discover that the music really doesn't fit with what's actually happened on screen. I mean, in this level, we're literally just running around in the snow following some track. Lassie herself is extremely stiff to control and her character model really just remains like that for the entire game. It's like controlling one of those plaster models where nothing we're able to bend. <laughs> and that was it! On to the next level! Level 2! In this game, you literally just control Lashy as she slides down a hill. Yes, that is it. Level 3. This is actually my favorite level. I just kind of like how you're able to just run around as you please. It's the little things. In this level, we have to hurt sheep. And that's it. Hurting these sheep actually do kind of suck though. Like, especially when they get stuck. Jesus Christ, get away from that tree. Also, farmer dude, maybe you should close those gates so the sheep don't run out again. 
it's just, it doesn't take my hard work seriously at all. Level 4! Probably in the most infuriating level. In this level, your puppy has apparently been brought by some absolute fucks who doesn't want to give it back, so instead you decide to just steal it back. I mean, I know these puppies were stolen to begin with, but if these people paid for it, I'm not sure I can just go in and do that. So not only is the level sketchy as fuck, it doesn't make it better that this level is particularly super lacky, so it feels like I'm trying to escape these dudes in slow motion. So you find your puppy, and instead of the game just ending, you also need to lead the puppy out of there, which would be great, if the puppy wasn't so super slow. Level 5. Your puppy is stuck in a cave. In this level you're supposed to bark or smell to find your puppy. These both suck. Barking makes you stop all the time and using your nose is just so inconsistent. There's also this annoying text that keeps appearing, like the game is literally mocking me when I'm trying to sniff around. Like, what do you want me to do, Lassie the game? Level 6. In this level you need to befriend at least two guard dogs and get them to follow you around. But I like to have an army. The AI for these characters are so fucking bad, they get stuck everywhere. Even the main villain just wanders around like a headless chicken. And that's, that's it. That's really it. 100 kroner for this bad boy for one hour of gameplay and I didn't even try to rush it. Of course there's also the little in-between levels where you can take care of the puppies with the bones that you pick up in the levels. but. Honestly, nothing happens if you don't, and like, the game doesn't give a shit, so why should I? This game is of course based on the 2008 Disney movie Bolt, which stars the dog Bolt, who is the star of an action-themed TV series. I actually think the movie is quite good. This game is not, though! Both the game centers around the TV show from the movie and the story is basically just an episode of the show. This means, of course, that in this game... This means, of course, that in this game, both actually have all of those superpowers like laser eyes and super strength and stuff like that, which he can use to fight all the villains. That sounds good so far, so let's load up the game and... Oh. Oh my god. Bolt has seen some shit. <laughs> well, let's get on with this. <laughs> That's nice. And the graphics somehow got even worse. Oh my god, even the text is fucking unreadable. And then we get to play us. Penny. But, but, in my defense, we do actually play for Bolt for most of the game. So technically it doesn't break any rules. Technically. In terms of things Bolt is able to do, most of it is the standard attacks mixed with some superpower that I mentioned earlier. Also, when Bolt attacks, it sounds like this. <laughs> And speaking about attacks, why the fuck is Bolt just hanging in the air like that? My boyfriend mentioned that it might be a Matrix reference, and I'm like... Maybe? But honestly, the overall quality of the visuals just makes it hard to see what it's supposed to do, and it, it honestly just makes me think it's a glitch. Good for you if it's on purpose, I just don't get it. Also, I promise you, this footage has not been compressed in any way. It looked just as shitty on my TV screen when I played the game. We beat up some more guys, switch character again, and suddenly we enter a hacking mini game. Yes, this game has hacking mini games apparently. You gotta be kidding me! This is just the shittier version of the hacking game to Sly Cooper. The first three of which 
came out before this game was released. Also, the hacking game from Sly Cooper is at least interesting to look at, not like this blue abomination over here. It also just controls like absolute crap. We're literally gliding around because they, for some reason, decided that the hacking minigame should have ice physics. Oh look, we're back at playing a sport and we... We're beating up bad guys again. Yay! All these battles become so boring so fast. You All you literally have to do is button as there's no need for any strategy whatsoever. No thoughts. Head empty. Only button mash. Oh whoop, back to Penny. And at this point in the game it's so fucking dark that I can't see what's going on on the screen. Apparently this is a PS2 problem because when you go and find gameplay footage on YouTube of the PS3 version of the game, it looks so much brighter than the version I have. What's going on? Oh look, there she goes. <laughs> Also, I know I only should be focusing on Bolt's part of the game, because the video's overall theme and all, but I have to mention that playing as Penny is an utter, utter miserable experience. I mean, half the time my inputs of her doesn't even fucking register. So I just jump and press the circle button to grab onto this thing, and I just jump and I just jump and I just jump and would you just Respond to my input, you motherfucker! Oh, my god, old pal Disky is here. Just in time for the most horrendous fight I've ever experienced in my entire life. The game doesn't even allow me to get some distance between us before I've hit him the first time. Then I'm allowed to use the entire space around us. Are you shitting me, game? We get inside and are treated to two hacking games in a row, and at this point, I'm quickly losing my sanity. Then we have to do these series of glides and leaps of fate onto different pipes in complete darkness as the camera drains energy faster than my will to live, only to be surprised attack at the top, so we quickly hit the attack button, but the attack button doesn't count anymore because we've always discovered us, so we fail the quick time event and then we have to do the whole thing over again. And just when you think it's finally going to end, then nope, nope, we're still going. Fuck! <laughs> At least I get some slight enjoyment pushing these guys off of cliffs. <laughs> ah yes, the classic slot machine lock. <laughs> okay, I think we're nearing the end at this point. I mean, we have to be. So why is it that we're suddenly stuck with nowhere to go and this stupid fucking hint that doesn't help shit keep flashing on the screen? We had to cheat. I can't believe it. We genuinely had to cheat to find a way to get out of here while playing Disney's Bolt, the fucking video game. And then when you're absolutely positively sure that now it's finally over, the game is finally done. missiles now boys, buckle up! And this may look simple, but I cannot stress this enough. The last couple of missiles are legit impossible to do. The mechanics are just too broken for a time trial to work. This is insane. I don't know if it's just broken because it's the PS2 version or what, but look at this. I swear I'm doing exactly what a game tells me to do, but nothing happens and I am losing my Fucking shit! It also doesn't matter. I don't care. It shouldn't take nine fucking tries to finish your stupid mission. And then at some point the action music stops and all we're left with is this horrifying shit. What is going on?
But it's fine. We're finally done. For real this time. <laughs> was fully awesome! <laughs> when Bolt was like and the missile was like and the thing like exploded and, and Penny was like ah! and Cal goes all if I the Penny pick it up <laughs> and Bolt's all ah, ah, ah. oh that was so fully awesome! <laughs> Thank you for watching the Bolt Marathon but stay tuned <gasps> for what? For what? For a complete replay of the Bolt Marathon! <laughs> Oh, oh yes, oh yes, let it begin. God is dead, and we killed him. Tokyo Jungle was released in 2012 in physical form and on the PlayStation Store. Despite this seemingly large availability, however, the game is almost impossible to find. It's no longer in the PlayStation Store, and those physical copies I mentioned? Yeah, they're only sold in Japan. So instead of having to wait weeks for the game to ship from Japan and then not even being able to read the text in the game, I decided to just download a version to play on a PS3 emulator on my computer. Which worked out great! Until it didn't. I had so many problems getting the game to run properly and in the end it just crashed too many times for me to continue to play it. But let's talk about what I actually did manage to experience. The game takes place in a world where mankind has all died out, so the animals have now risen up and are fighting for survival. So depending on what kind of animals you play as, you have to do things as avoid larger predators, hunt prey, mark your territory, find a mate and have offsprings, etc. etc. In the tutorial part of the game, which was the only part of the game that I got to play, you play as multiple different animals to learn all of these different skills. But I did play mostly as dogs and I'm pretty sure that in the actual game it lets you pick which animal you want to play as. So if you just play as dogs then... yeah, then it counts for the video. It counts. <laughs> The game is surprisingly graphic. I mean, look at all this murder happening in just this small segment. My favorite part of the small bit that I played was this part here, where we first get told that this dog is like 15 years old and therefore needs to mate now. But then, after we've marked our territory and we've found a female dog to mate with, the game is like, no, sorry, you need to rank up. She's not interested in you before you rank up, so go out and kill. And I'm like, this dog is 15 years old. He's like an 100 year old man at this point. With death knocking on his door right before our eyes. Give him a break. And speaking about breaks, do you know what the perfect way to take a break is? Look! Dog Island! Another game I totally own and didn't download illegally at all. The Dog Island is a game that was released in the spring of 2007 in Japan, but for some reason the rest of the world didn't get it until a full year later. This game is unique in the sense that it's the first game of our list where you get to pick the breed of the dog that you want to play as, as well as naming it. Oh, oh but not all the. Oh, but I mean. I mean, look at it. I mean. Look at it. Yeah, okay. So, I'm trying to get a breed, and yeah, it's totally not all the. Oh, but not all the. Oh, but not all the. So, after choosing a breed and totally not naming it after my current obsession, we're off to play the game. All in all, this game really gets what I mean when I say play as a dog. Besides being able to sniff and bark, which we've also seen in some of the other games, there's also a button which makes you run faster and a button that makes you dig. Also, if you hold down the bark button long enough, your dog will howl. Yes! Right off the bat, I'm actually kind of surprised that the game starts off way more serious than I'd actually expected it to. You have a small sibling, the gender of which you can choose in the beginning, who are sick and most likely dying from some strange, incurable disease. The doctor from our own little town is completely out of option, and it's only this one other doctor who live on an island far away who might actually have the knowledge to cure them. 
And so we're off, going out on a mission to save our only sibling, even though we're nothing but a mere child ourselves. Forced to leave behind our mother and friends as we embark on an actual life-threatening journey that no child should ever go on, leaving us with no choice but to grow up far, far too soon. So after being on this ship for like a week, saving a life and removing so much dust, it's a surprise that the sheer weight of it hadn't sunk us already. We're told by our captain that there's a big storm coming and that it would be best to turn around and sail back to our town. So Eddie, who is still a literal child, just jumps off the fucking ship. Well, I guess we're dead now. No, no, okay, thank fucking God. Our pop is still somehow alive and well. We're apparently been saved by this dog, Amelia. And somehow, even more miraculously, we've managed to wash up on the dog island, which we're trying to reach in the first place. She talks about how we could have brutally died for a couple of minutes before leading us to the doctor, who should be able to save our sister. After that, we return to the house that we have borrowed, when holy fuck, what is that? What is that thing? Okay, hold on to your socks for a second, because now... Now it's gonna get weird. So this sentient paper cutout thing is called an ank, an ank, who knows? And he's very surprised that we can actually see him because apparently dogs don't accept their existence anymore. He then plants a seed for something called the ank tree, which he has been ordered to do by the queen. The tree grows when someone shows appreciation towards its owner, and Pateshi needs to do this to get back into the ant land because apparently he was such a little bitch that the queen personally kicked him out of the ant land and was like, you can't come back until you've gotten this tree to grow. Got all that? No? Good! Let's move on! From here on out, the gameplay mostly just consists of walking back and forth. We're told about something that someone needs, is giving the items smell so we can find it. We run to the correct location, sniff around, dig the item up, and then finally run all the way back to deliver the item. Rinse and repeat for about 800 hours. Okay, okay, there is actually more than that. There's of course a main story throughout the entire thing, which expands as we get further into the game, but Gameplay-wise, there is really not much of variety. But the dogs are still so fucking cute! So she got so excited! And for a kids game, there are surprisingly many themes of death in this game. There is of course our sibling dying, but beside them, there is also a dog who is so afraid of blood that she's literally afraid of the color red itself. And we later learned that it's because she, when she was a pup, she had a fight with her best friend, whom she accidentally injured. This dog's family then moves away literally the next day, so the first dog spent years upon years of thinking that she might have accidentally killed her best friend. Which, of course, she hadn't, but still, she didn't know that. There's also the doctor, who apparently once had a girlfriend who was sick, and because he was determined to fight a cure on his own, ignoring advice from a healer, the girlfriend did eventually die, and we see him mourn her at her gravestone. That was all very unexpected, to say the least. Going back to the main story, the doctor does eventually make a cure, and then he sails back with us to our own little island. So we return back to our sibling, and ah shit, ah fuck. Okay, there is still one thing we can do. Apparently there is this legendary flower on the dog's island that can cure all kinds of diseases, but nobody knows where it is or what it looks like. Great, wonderful. We're relying on a straight-up myth to cure our dying sibling now. 
We talk with the healer dog who tells us that there were apparently many legendary flowers, but the dog seemingly fucked up big time and forgot to appreciate and respect the world of nature. A little bit of a hand-fisted theme of protecting nature to put in our dog game. We also learned that only a so-called sniff master can find the flower. And how do you become a sniff master, you ask? By talking to this dog first and learning the smells of different fragment pieces of a ring, which he reveals to be his own apprentice ring from when he was a student of another dog named Road. To become a sniff master, we need to become a student of Road ourselves. So after getting the apprentice ring, we run over to Road's dojo, where we're told that to become a student, we must pass the test to find a hidden flower vase. So we find the stupid vase and become a student, and then he tells us that, that we must fill out the blank spot in our smell list by helping others in need. So after helping out so many people who I'm not sure why are relying on a literal child to fix their fucking problems, we're returning back to Ro, who tells us that it's time to see Master Sao. But before we go and see Master Sao, Ro needs to test us again, this time by going to see a Sphinx in the desert who will ask us a riddle, and if we answer the riddle, the Sphinx will give us a certificate, which we must then take back to Ro. The Sphinx then tells us to find that ivory key, which a snake is guarding, and then we're giving the location of the certificate. That's not a fucking riddle, by the way. We then travel back to Road with the certificate, and then he tells us how to get to Master Sal. So then we make our way to Master Sal, who tells us that in order to find a legendary flower, becoming a sniff master isn't enough. No, 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 we need to grow the motherfucking ank tree. So everything is connected now, isn't that great? Then Master Sao tells us that the first thing we must achieve is to learn more than a hundred smells. Then we must locate the book of the Sniff Master, which of course is split into two separate books, which we must locate one at a time. So we find the first one and then are told that we have to go and help more dogs before he'll give us the smell of the second one. <clears throat> so we return eight years later and finally gets told where the second book is, which turns out to be in a village we just came from. So finally, after having done all of that, we must go and find the Sniff Master medal. But to find the medal, we need a key to get through some ruins. Luckily, Sao actually has the goddamn key, but he doesn't want to give it to us because then we would just run to the ruins right away. Like, yeah. So he sends us back to look at the goddamn motherfucking ank tree instead of just giving us the key. My sister is dying, you absolute fuck! So we just go right back to Sal's dojo. There is so much unnecessary back and forth in this game and I am losing my mind! We run through some ruins, solve some puzzles and finally find the fucking medal. We then find out that the medal is like a key to get us to where we need to go. So then, finally, fucking Finally, we become a sniff master and goes to this ancient groove to find the legendary flowers only to find out that the fucking flower has withered and died. Are you telling me that we did all of that and that still wasn't enough? No. No, it wasn't. So now we have to get help from the Ank Queen by traveling to the Ank Land. And then there is a whale in the sky. God fucking end me. And I could stop here. I really could. But you have to hear the shit they say at the very end. So apparently the world is surrounded by a giant shell called the Guardian Shell, and we share our sky with many flying fragments of shattered stars. These fragments have a tendency to collide into each other, but the Guardian Shell protects our world from that. However, as it protects us, the shell slowly grows weaker and weaker. To get the shell the strength back, the dark ones had a festival called the Star Festival, where they would give their thank to Mother Nature. The angs also help to give the shell strength, but apparently it isn't enough 
trust anymore and now the shell has gotten so thin that it's affecting the borders between our world. Hence why there was a whale in the sky before. That creature apparently comes from the Ang clan. So the only way to save the world is to hold the Star Festival once again, but only Sniff Master can hold the festival and they need a fully grown Ang free as well as a hot air balloon. But of course, that's also not enough. We must then find the Stone of Heaven, which is what will give the hot air balloon power to fly all the way to the Guardian Shell, which should then regain its strength. And then, if it all goes well, the legendary flower should come back to life. Sounds easy, right? We've come this far. I didn't even bother to mention the 800 different room with puzzles we had to get through to get to the Queen. So finding a little stone shouldn't be as much of a problem. Well, what our dear Queen forgot to mention is that the Stone of Heavens is guarded by a literal fucking dinosaur skeleton. We get the stone, hold the festival, and then the flower finally comes back to life. And then the credits start. Yes, apparently, even though it's been what we've been working towards this entire time, the act of us returning to our village and curing our sister is just kind of treated as an afterthought, which is set during the credits. Feels a bit like a letdown, to be honest. I like how I started this whole thing by saying that this is a dog game that I actually like, but I've done nothing but rant about it this entire time. The truth is, it is a really nice game. The characters are cute, the subplots are decent, and I like just running around, sniffing and exploring. But I feel like a lot of it gets overshadowed by the actual drug trip the story later involves into. As well as some of the more pointless mechanics of the game, which I haven't even gotten a chance to talk about yet. Like how the sniffing part is absolutely infuriating at times, because you have to be so stupidly specific where you dig, they will end up digging centimeters from where you need to be, but the game still counts it as being wrong. There are multiple things you can collect in this game, like fish, bugs, fruits and flowers. But whenever you find a new thing, it isn't just automatically registered. No, you have to find one of four specific dogs back in the first village and show them your findings. So while the dog game is actually a pretty nice game, there is just a lot of small things that holds it back from being something that you want to replay over and over again. It's good that we have dogs then. Wait, I didn't even get to mention that the currency in this game is called a fucking wolf. Pets, dogs too, and cats too are games that came out in late 2007 and they're made by the same developer that made The Dog Island. This game is pretty interesting because not only does it have different names depending on where you buy it, it also had multiple ports which are remarkably different from each other. Pets, Dogs 2 and Cats 2 are essentially two different games, but the only actual difference between the two games is that the main animals are either cats or dogs. Everything else from the setting to the gameplay is completely identical, which is why people usually just talk about it as if it's just one game. As far as I can see, the games were released under the title Pets, Dogs 2 and Cats 2 in America, Hittens and the Magical Hat, and Puppy and the Magical Hat in Japan, that's a mouthful, and simply Cats and Dogs in Europe with the set, because we're cool. So for the remainder of this video, I'm just gonna refer to this game as Dogs, because this is the version that I have and it's the name that I've grown up with. But again, not only are the names different, but the ports are as well. The Wii and PlayStation 2 version, which is the version that we'll be talking about in this video, are adventure style games where you play as a dog in a world inhabited by only dogs and other animals. The PC version, however, is a game similar in style to the rest of the Pets series, where you as a human adopt and care for a dog. The DS version is yet another version, but this intro is getting long enough, so here's a summary of that version's plot from Wikipedia. This game here I've actually had for so many years, and it's really funny because despite knowing about this for so long, I never knew that the Dog Island existed. And even when I eventually became aware of it, I never actually looked into it before making this video because I just 
kind of thought that they were the same game, that the, the Dog Island were just like a weird chibi version of, of this game, of dogs. But it turns out that that's because it's the same studio which worked on both games. And even though they came out the same year, Wikipedia says that Dogs is based on Dogs Island. So we know that this one came out after. And I feel like when you play both of them, it does actually feel like Dogs is like the upgraded version of a Dog Island. They are still remarkably similar though, and it's not just the general style. The Dogs look the same. Although the ones in dogs just have a bit more normal proportions. The subtitle box is the same, the enemies are the same, how you catch Spark is the same, and even how you control the dog is basically identical. You bark and dig the same way. But instead of having to push the dash button multiple times to run faster, like you have in Dog Island, in this game you just automatically start to run faster the longer you run, and it's just so much better. And they upgraded the sniffing mechanic. Thank God they upgraded the sniffing mechanic. They replaced that goddamn fucking meter with an arrow so you actually know which way you're supposed to go and it's also become so much more forgiving in how accurate you need to be to dig. Digging in this game does actually not feel like a chore. So again, like Dog Island, this game starts with us having to pick a breed of dog. And in this game we have to pick a Vesti and name her Lady. I mean, that's not even up for discussion, that is just the rule. Then we have the story. Oh my god, the story. Where Dog Island have kind of a simple setup from the beginning and then the magical stuff gets added on. Dogs just kinda smacks you right in the face from the beginning. This is the magical hat. This ugly as fuck abomination is the greatest magical object in the entire world. Whoever owns it is basically God. So apparently our family has been guarded this hat for generations and has only used it for good. Or so they say. Then one day we and our best friend Victor is told that an evil wolf has been captured and imprisoned in the local police station. We go to check it out but the wolf is asleep. We are also told not to mess around with him because this guy is actually really fucking dangerous. Being the little shits that we are, we decide to sneak back into the police station at night time to see if Evelet, oh yes, his name is fucking Evelet, is awake by then. He is, and holy shit, the game is not subtle about this one. This wolf, this wolf is evil. I mean, just look at those eyebrows. Those are the eyebrows of evil. So Evelyn tricks us to go and get the magical hat before then tricking us again to let him see it up close. He grabs the hat and, okay, not even Evelyn, the evil wolf, can make this hat look intimidating. Evelyn breaks out of prison and then just decides to fuck shit up. No reason really, presumably just for fun. So the world is fucked, Victor locks himself in the jail cell out of guilt and we're tasked with fixing the mess that we made. Yes, in this game, it's actually our fault that people's lives have been destroyed. Or, well, it's Evelyn's, but you know what I mean. So we go out of the police station and holy shit, what is that? No, this strange little nightmare fuel is not an ank like in Dogs Island. No, no, this thing is a physical manifestation of the goodness inside of the magical hat, which was literally yeeted from it when Evelyn used the bat for evil. What? So he is here to help us now. Yay! Or that is what I would think if it wasn't because the little fucker is actively trying to get us killed. Every one of the adult dogs is like, don't go after Evelyn, just help around on the island. Don't try and get the magical hat back yourself, it's dangerous. Which makes perfect sense because we're a literal child. And then this fucking thing is just like, yeah, we should get the hat back, let's go. I'm literally eight years old, do not! Also, he sounds like this. God help me. So we're off to help the various people whose life we've just ruined, helping them rebuild their shops by finding stuff and running various errands. Even though there's no mention of a sniff master this time around, you do still primarily use your nose to find the things the other dogs need. And yes, that means there is a lot of going back and forth. 
in this game as well. Although, as I mentioned before, this does kind of feel like an upgraded version of the Dog Island in multiple ways. Besides the whole digging mechanic, collecting has now become so much more manageable because we now only have a single book which records all of the things that we find and we don't have to go like four different places to get new things registered. Clothing is actually also a thing which was available in the last game, but I never mentioned it because I just didn't really care about it. You could buy clothes in every single village, but never the same things, and it only came out in a single style. In this game, there was one single clothing store that gets unlocked as soon as you help repair it, and as well as being able to buy almost everything from the get-go, every single item comes in eight different colors, so there's so much room for variety. There's an aquarium now, so that you can actually see the fish that you catch, and the dogs have apparently converted entirely to capitalism somewhere between this and the last game. Because the currency in this game is just straight up money. But hey, I guess that means we can actually sell the things that we find instead of just throwing them out. So I guess that you win this round, DF. But yeah, after the initial intro to the story, the game does primarily focusing on helping people out for the duration of the game. There are multiple subplots in these missions, just like there was in Dog Island, but none of them are really interesting enough to focus on in this video. At some point we meet a wizard, and then later the wizard's brother, who had turned himself into a rock for like years, so that he could safely observe the other rocks. Whatever, that's not important. We bring them some crystals to make a magic shield that can protect us against Evelet, yada yada magic shit. In the meantime, however, Evelet has become even more powerful, which of course means bigger and even more evil eyebrows. He also summons a dragon at some point, but meh. So. It's finally time. It's time to bring down Evelyn once and for all. The portal opens and we and the Wizard Brother enters the swirling void, only to find ourselves at the battlefield. The aforementioned Draken is ready to battle, and Evelyn himself is in his final form. It's gonna be a battle of might, of magical powers that no one has ever seen before. We then proceed to hit the dragon with rocks, no, I'm actually serious. You thought this was gonna be a magical battle, but think again, because we have rocks. So the dragon goes down, and then it's finally time for the final boss. Surely, we can't just use rocks to defeat an enemy who has absorbed so much magic that he has basically become god? No. To bring down Evelyn, we have to hit him with a rock and then bark at him. Are you fucking kidding me? Also, guys, Evelyn has a fucking 8-pack. Evelyn is fucking shredded. He then loses his power and gets sucked into a swirling vortex. And... Wait, where did he go? No, no, seriously, where, where the fuck did he go? Did he end up in space? Is he dead? I mean, I know that he's evil, but are we just gonna not ask any questions about this? H hello In the end... We're reunited with our parents. <laughs> this is so fucking cute, I can't. We're then giving the magical hat by our dad, and yes, I am very thankful, but please no. Please don't put it on, it's so ugly. Oh no. I love this dumb game. It's repetitive as shit, but I feel like its mechanics have been upgraded and away from Dog's Island, 
which makes it so that it has way more replayability than that other game. But I have also had this game since I was like 10 years old, so I'm, I'm biased as fuck. Talking about games that I've had forever. <music> 102 Dalmatians Puppies to the Rescue was released in the year 2000, and it's one of the surprisingly many games which was based on the book, the Disney animated movies, and the live action movies of the same names. This is, however, the only game on this list which looked like it's an actual pleasant experience to play. Other than that, we have 101 Dalmatians Escape from the Ville Manor from 1997, which is an hour-long point-and-click adventure game. Disney's animated storybook 101 Dalmatians from the same year. And, of course, my favorite one, Math Antics with Disney's 101 Dalmatians. There was also a game from 2003 called Disney's 101 Dimensions 2 Patches London Adventure, which is a game tie-in to the official sequel of the 1961 animated movie. But this game really doesn't fucking count. So much of this 2003 game seems to be reused from the 2000 game, which is the one we're talking about today. Sound effects, assets, the dog's movements, and even the fucking music is exactly the same. The only difference is that it looks much worse than the 2000s game. There, I said it. So all of those games are officially completely off the table, which leaves us with this little gem. The game starts off with Oddball and Domino, two of the three puppies introduced in the second live-action movie, watching some TV. Bored, the two of them venture outside to do some digging, where they discover, Jesus Christ, what is that? So in this game, it seems like Cruella finally stepped out of the fashion world for good, because she has now gone over to making kids' toys. Yeah, it, it, it's weird, but don't... don't ask questions. The problem is, though, that her toys doesn't sell, and instead of realizing that it's because most of it looked like this, she theorizes that it has to be because of the children of England are spending their money on their dogs instead of her toys. She then mysteriously proclaims that you'll have to initiate Plan B. And don't you worry, we'll get on to what Plan B is later on in this video. When Oddball and Domino returns, all the other puppies have gone, and only their parents are left. Their dad, Dipstick, knows that this has to be Cruella's doing, so the parents set out to find the puppies and stop Cruella. The two remaining puppies are told to stay put, but they quickly decide that they want to help finding the puppies instead. And thus begins our story. From here on, the two of them will go through various levels all around London, searching for the siblings which have been placed in wooden boxes. When you play through the game, you have the option to play as either Oddball or Domino, and you have the ability to just switch around between them whenever you want to. Whom you play as, however, really doesn't matter. They have the exact the same abilities, and even in the cutscenes where they interact with the other animals, their dialogue is exactly the same. The enemies of each level are Corella's toys, which have now been reprogrammed to attack and capture puppies. So how do you defeat the enemies, you ask? Well, you have two options. You can either bark at them, or you can roll into them. In fact, you can roll anywhere, at any time, all the time. And god fucking damn it, you'd be wrong if you think I'm not rolling around like a fucking idiot all the way through the level. You also have a sniffing mechanic in this game as well, and I actually feel like this is the game where it has been the most responsive. You can even roll and sniff at the same time, which is just the delight. The sniffing mechanic is also important if you want to be a completionist and find all the 100 bones which hides away in every level. Every level also has an animal to guide you. Although most of them are made specifically for this game, there are some well-known characters which make their return. Characters like Sergeant Tips from the animated movie, as well as Fluffy and Waddlesworth from the second live-action movie. Speaking about characters from the movies... Yeah, you're right. Jasper and Horace are in this one as well. They appeared in about every second level to try and catch us, and it's our job to lure them in with some kind of trap, so we don't actually get caught. And honestly... Jasper and Horace should be fucking dead. I mean, I know they're the bad guys, but we're straight up torturing them in this game. We're talking from being frozen alive, 
to crossed by a giant stone. Beside those two, this game also have the French guy Le Pet from the second movie as a villain as well. And even though I wouldn't say that his life is as bad as Jasper and Horace, I still wouldn't say that it's easy. I mean, look at him. We even get to fight Cruella herself and apparently she's really not into fruit because that is literally always what we use to fight her. All these villains encounters are very neat. I just really wish that the puppies didn't feel the need to make a bad pun every time a villain is defeated. I guess Jasper got the point. In the end... <laughs> Let me out! It is very dark in here! Well, at least his mummy loves him. <laughs> that Jasper, he's the coolest guy I know. Ugh. But I also think I've stalled this long enough, so let's get into what her plan actually is. Okay, so Cruella's inventor guy, Professor whatever, has invented this substance called the super goop. With this, Cruella plans to freeze the puppies alive, casing them in this shiny substance so that she can sell them as realistic dog toys. I mean, I know this is the woman who wanted to skin puppies to make a coat, but holy fucking shit, that's evil. Her plan makes my skin crawl. So yeah, freeing all of our siblings suddenly seems really fucking important. Also because they say some really weird things when you free them. Which way to the bathroom? Oh man, am I hungry or what? <laughs> you saved me! Nice job! Excelsior, <laughs> I'm free! Another thing I have to mention about this game is the soundtrack, because it's seriously too good to be in a movie tie-in game. I mean, seriously, listen to some of this. Maybe also notice that I haven't mentioned the soundtrack at all in any of the other games, but that's because it's something that I normally just don't think about. But in this game, I hold a little break every time I get to the castle level just to listen to the Stobass track. Speaking of the levels, since it would be way too much to go through every single one, here's a handful of the most memorable ones. You go up through Big Ben from the inside and you will literally hear this bat say the word counterweight just so many times. Jump toward the red counterweight. Now jump to the yellow counterweight. Now make sure you explore the ledges that you can reach from this counterweight. Now jump off onto that ledge and you'll find a way to get to the purple counterweight. You go to the National Museum. This is just one of my favorite levels. I, I don't really know why. There's a level where you have to help out on a farm and the level ends with you, the puppy, driving a tractor and destroying the old outhouse. You also get to give a pig a gift for her birthday and she just gets so happy and I'm so sentimental and I cry every time. There's a snow level which is usually not very interesting, but I encountered a really strange glitch in my playthrough for this video, which I've never seen before, where I was just stuck in a gliding position forever and had to die to reset the animation. And then there's the ancient castle. 
where you can find secret rooms and in the end you're launched off of a fucking catapult. There's a whole ass maze with giant tumbleweeds and rotating rooms, which makes the level very unique, but also a complete pain in the ass to find all the bones in. Cromella's mansion is just so delightfully spooky, and it really leans into the whole devil metaphor by placing a giant ass evil looking furnace right below Quill's bedroom. And lastly, there's the final level, the toy factory, which is just a straight up madhouse with machines that actively tries to crush you and weird cubes that defines all forms of logic. <laughs> It's in this factory that we once again face up against Cruella. Her armed with her super goop and us armed with uh, strange sap guns which mysteriously is sent down from above? Huh? Also, I don't know why, but this thing scared the piss crap out of me when I was a child. It's so creepy. Of course we win, the day is safe, Cruella is now stuck with her inventor dude and looks like this, and hey! Jasper and Horace isn't actually dead. How? All in all, I really enjoy this game. It's cute, there's a lot of creativity in each level, the soundtrack is an actual banger, and the game actively encourages exploration with multiple hidden rooms and secrets hiding in multiple levels, such as the aforementioned castle level and Cruella's mansion. And yes, that was 102 Dalmatians published to the rescue. Or most of it at least, I haven't even mentioned the different minigames. Because yes, the game that every child wants to play, Checkers. Okay, most of the minigames are actually pretty fun, except for the last one. In the last one, you just have weird breakdancing puppies. <laughs> Okay, that's enough of you. Okami was actually pretty close to making it to the list. It's just the small fact that it's a wolf and not a dog. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, but rules are rules. It is a really fucking good game though. Released in 2006, Okami features the sun god Amaterasu I may or may not pronounce that very wrongly, I'm sorry, who takes the form of a white wolf. The player then controls Amaratsu as she wanders through the land, and with the help of the tool called the Celestial Brush, the player is able to physically draw on the screen like a canvas, calling forth the various powers Amaratsu acquires throughout the game. And I mean, just look at that art style. That's some yim yum stuff if I've ever seen some. Once again, technically not a dog, so they can't be on the list. Normally, dogs also aren't able to draw forth the sun, but that's a completely different discussion. Okay, so sometimes I go to the internet and I look at dumb stuff in my free time. So while in the rules I mentioned that I wouldn't look at any free Flash game or other kinds of free games online. I'm a hypocrite and I have to mention this one. But as I said, I wasn't actually looking for material for this video, which is also why I only started recording after I have played for like an hour. But this game is so batshit insane that I just have to mention it. So in Dog Simulator 3D, you play as a dog of your choosing and literally the only thing you can do in the beginning of the game is talk with other dogs to get mission and kill things. Granted, you really suck at killing things in the beginning, which is why you get some really dumb missions. So you get to kill a lot of small stuff so you gradually get more powerful. You can also just watch a lot of ads to get stronger faster. Which I did. So after a while you find a mate. Sweet! And then you get to have puppies. Sweet! So now these three dogs are just following you around and everything you attack to kill, they'll attack as well. And suddenly you just have this little army with you. And can you see where this is going? One hour. 
That was how long it took me to become a god in this game. Suddenly, we can also attack humans, no problem. We can kill everything, nothing can stop us. You can also furnish your home, which is just the backyard, with a lot of normal stuff, like gold rock, horse statue, crystal, and altar. This game runs and controls like absolute garbage, but it doesn't matter because I am the god of all things living. But in the end, the game crashed so hard that it literally forced my computer to shut down, so... Yeah. Honestly, that was probably also for the best. And then there's also this thing. <laughs> That was it. So, in the end, I think we have two conclusions to our little adventure. The first one is that most games where you play as a dog really fucking suck, and people should probably do something about that, because I am starving for content where I get to play as a dog. And the second one is that we need way more of aforementioned content where I personally get to play as a dog and that is like yesterday we needed that that is right now so get on with it game developers And I mean, come on. Ah!